Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Tidbits Art History. My name is Christina Koopman, and as always, thanks for joining me. When I say the name Michelangelo, there's usually one place everyone's mind goes first. This is the Sistine Chapel. It's true, the man was an incredibly talented painter who had a nearly unparalleled impact on the entirety of Western art. In fact, the term Renaissance man was created to describe him, not Leonardo da Vinci, his predecessor. The Sistine Chapel is often considered one of the greatest works probably of all time. The thing is though, Michelangelo kind of hated painting. He was apprenticed to a painter as a teenager, but it's never really where his heart was. Growing up, he was primarily raised by his nursemaid, and that nursemaid's husband was a stonemason. That stonemason's father owned a marble quarry just outside of Tuscany. It's there that Michelangelo grew up learning how to hold a chisel, look for defects in marble, and just generally fell in love with stonework. There are a ton of resources out there about his David sculpture, so I'd actually like to take this opportunity to talk more about his Pietà. Let's take a deeper look. For starters, the Pietà, which translates as the pity, is a scene from the Bible portrayed by many artists over the centuries. It's a subject in Christian art depicting the Virgin Mary cradling the dead body of Jesus after his body was removed from the cross. The subject matter is most often found portrayed in sculpture. In 1497, Cardinal Jean Billier commissioned Michelangelo to carve, quote, a life-sized Virgin Mary dressed with a dead Christ in her arms, end quote. Jean Billier was the Cardinal of Santa Sabina and French governor of Rome. In the contract for the commission of the statue, Jacopo Galli, Michelangelo's sort of agent, specifically assured the cardinal that this would have been, quote, the most beautiful work of marble in Rome and that no other artist today could do it better, end quote. Michelangelo was incredibly demanding in his choice of raw materials, and it took him about nine months to choose the exact block of marble and have it transported from the quarries of Carrara to Rome. Michelangelo's interpretation of the Pietà is unprecedented in Italian sculpture for many reasons. Prior to this, the Pietà scene was often used to depict echoes of the Passion of Christ, highlighting wounds Jesus received on the cross and portraying his body as a ghastly sight. When Michelangelo set out to create his Pietà, he wanted to create a work he described as, quote, the heart's image. He presents a much quieter, more subdued version of this scene than was previously created. The marks of the crucifixion are limited to very small nail marks and an indication of the wound in Jesus' side. Christ's face does not reveal signs of the passion. Michelangelo did not want his version of the Pietà to represent death, but rather to show, quote, the religious vision of abandonment and a serene face of the sun, end quote. The way the artist depicted Mary was also quite unusual. The Madonna here is represented as being very young for a mother of an approximately 33-year-old son. In other depictions of this scene, artists portrayed Mary as being roughly in about her 50s or so, not this youthful woman experiencing a quiet grief. She's not screaming or crying, but instead appears to have a sereneness tinged with sadness. This too was unusual. If we zoom out, we see the pyramid structure of the composition. As we've said before, the pyramid is a very solid, stable composition to create. The vertices of the pyramid all lead to Mary's head and face, making her expression the focal point of the whole piece. The other thing to note about Michelangelo's Madonna is actually her size. The statue widens progressively down the drapery of Mary's dress to the base. The figures are actually quite out of proportion from each other, owning to the difficulty of depicting a fully grown man cradled full length in a woman's lap. When you compare the two of them, Mary's body is huge in relation to Jesus. Much of Mary's body is concealed by her monumental drapery, however, and the relationship of figures appears quite natural to the eye and not bothersome. 
Notably, this sculpture is the only work of his art that Michelangelo ever signed. Upon hearing that visitors thought it had been sculpted by Cristoforo Solari, a competitor, he signed his name across the front. Reports indicate that Michelangelo later regretted his outburst of pride and swore never to sign another work of his ever again, which holds true. Subsequent to its carving, the Pietà sustained much damage, unfortunately, the most substantial of which occurred on May 21, 1972, Pentecostal Sunday, when geologist, Hungarian-born Australian Laszlo Toth walked into the chapel and attacked the sculpture with a geologist's hammer while shouting, quote, I am Jesus Christ, I have risen from the dead, end quote. With 15 hammer blows, he removed Mary's arm at the elbow, knocked off a chunk of her nose, and chipped one of her eyelids. Unfortunately, many onlookers that day took many of the pieces of marble that flew off and ended up on the floor. Some pieces were later returned, but many were not, including Mary's nose, which had to be reconstructed from a block cut out of her back. After the attack, the work was painstakingly restored and returned to its place in St. Peter's. It's now protected by bulletproof glass. Artists have a unique ability to be storytellers. Their stories are not limited to one language and can cross barriers of religion, class, geography, and more. How does one tell a new visual story of a scene that's been depicted hundreds of times before? Well, if you're 26-year-old Michelangelo, you approach it with much thought, deep faith, and a confidence in your own decisions and skills that leads to one of the most revered sculptures ever created. <laughs>